federal prosecutor and Missouri attorney general candidate, and Tom Dupree, former deputy assistant attorney general. Gentlemen, great to see you. Thank you for being here. Happy New Year. Uh, well, let's get right to it. What, what right does the Secretary of State operating on her own? She did, she, unlike Colorado, she did not go through the state Supreme Court. She was a unilateral decision, ad hoc, by her, and she's not a lawyer, by the way, to do this. She's disenfranchising the, at least the 44% of voters who voted for Trump in 2020. What right does she have to do this, if any? She has zero, right? I mean, that's the point here. Shanna Bellows is a washed-up political hack. She lost a U.S. Senate race to Susan Collins by about 40 points. And now she's seeking to seize her moment in the sun by engaging in blatantly unlawful conduct uh, that's going to end up uh, on, on the floor as soon as a competent court takes one look at it. Uh, but it just speaks to the danger of this movement all over the country to try to wage this campaign of lawfare against President Trump keep him off the ballot, keep him tied down with legal case after legal case. This is not the way elections in America are supposed to be fought and won. No. It's a really sad day for the republic. Well, Tom, that's why we have a constitution to prevent things like this. And her, her attitude was so frivolous. She was on MSNBC, which, of course, was very sympathetic to her. Here's what she said about how she came to the decision. Listen, roll it. I could not, unfortunately or fortunately, wait for the United States Supreme Court to make a de decision. Tom, I could not wait for the Supreme Court. I had to do this all on my own. I mean, it was, it's, it's, it's so, her attitude to, towards the Constitution is, is so frivolous, it kind of gives me goosebumps, makes me worried about people, uh, whether people have any respect for that wonderful document. Well, look, I had a very similar reaction when I saw the, that interview. I mean, typically when you have a public official rendering what's the equivalent of a judicial decision, they don't then go on television and kind of explain themselves in what I think a lot of Americans perceived as a partisan way. Uh, I mean, and that's the real concern here is that I think a lot of people, uh, including but not limited to the people who are prepared to vote for President Trump, you know, Mainers who disagree with President Trump, are criticizing this as a partisan decision. And when you have the Secretary of State kind of making the rounds of talk shows to explain her decision and yeah. to justify it. I think that just further feeds the perception that this was a decision that was not guided by the law, but by a desire to reach a preferred right. political outcome. Right. And well, that's the point. It, it, there is a disregard for the rule of law in this nation in so many different areas. And now the, the chickens are coming home to roost and we're seeing how it has the possibility of upending an election. I mean, the, the, you, you see it in, at the border. No rule of law at the border. You see it on our streets. No rule of law. These criminals that should be in jail are getting out and killing people. And now you see it in, in, in our election campaign. Is Do you think we have finally reached the point, the American voters, to which they, they're, they're saying, stop, this has just gone too far? I think the radical left is willing to shred the Constitution, is willing to shred the rule of law, as long as it allows them to advance the cause of leftism. I don't think they care what the Constitution says, as long as their spurious interpretation of it allows, to, allows them to keep President Trump off the presidential ballot. And as you said, that is just such a dangerous attitude, one deeply at variance with the U.S. Constitution, with American traditions, with the very idea of the American Republic. Fortunately, I think their efforts are going to fail, and I think in 2024, we are going to see a conservative revolution, the likes of which this country hasn't seen in a long time, yeah. as voters reject exactly this sort of left-wing approach to our country. Well, Tom, I'll tell you, one group of people that care a lot about the Constitution is the Supreme Court. I hope, I hope the Supreme Court cares about it. How soon will they take this on? I mean, the sooner the better. This is to there, are, there are a total of 13 states now that are trying to take Trump off the ballot using this ruse of obviously uh, uh, something that totally undermines the, the case of rule of law and due process in this country. When will the Supremes take this on? Yeah, and that's interesting because that is actually one issue on which everyone in this debate can agree is that if the Supreme Court is going to weigh in and decide it, and I think they will, they need to do so quickly. Um, I mean, yeah. a lot of these states, Colorado, these ballots are about to be printed. And so the Supreme Court doesn't have the luxury of time. It doesn't have the ability to take what typically would be months, if not you know, up to a year, to decide a case. They're going to have to do this quickly, and they're going to have to do it decisively. I think they are going to accept this case for review. I think they're going to issue a decision in the next week 
week or two saying they will take the case. And then I think they will issue a decision on the merits, which in all likelihood will reverse what the Colorado Supreme Court originally did mm. within the next month or two. That is my very, very strong hunch here, David. Will, what concerns me is if it's not a unanimous vote, we're going to have these, these calls and screams from the streets uh, to pack the Supreme Court, that the Supreme Court is, is antiquated, it's an old body, it should be, should be much bigger, much more representative of, of our democracy, maybe 12, maybe 15, maybe 30 people should be in the Supreme Court, if, unless it's a unanimous decision. What do you think? Yeah, this is exactly why the left has launched these sorts of unprecedented attacks on the Supreme Court in recent years. They need to delegitimize the court because their views, their approaches uh, don't have anything to do with the Constitution and the rule of law. And they see the Supreme Court as a real stumbling block uh, to their ability to enact their agenda. Fortunately, uh, if history is any guide, the Democrats have been trying to pack the Supreme Court since 1936. Thus far, they've failed. I think the American people know that sort of political ploy for what it is. Uh, but as Tom said, at the end of the day, the Supreme Court is going to speak here, and I hope mm. it speaks decisively and as one, because these efforts are just so radical and so extra legal. And Tom, what about all the other uh, attempts to keep Trump off the ballot? All of the, particularly these, these, uh, these local cases, I'm thinking of the one in New York, the so-called fraud case, in which there's not an aggrieved party to that fraud. Uh, I mean, are, will they eventually get... I mean, the Supremes are going to be dealing with a lot of elections. They don't like to deal with one, let alone a half a dozen or more of them, as they're going to have to do in the coming year. Well, that's true. I can't imagine that any of the justices have any desire to wade into the election craziness. But and they're going to the, be forced to, right? Well, I think they have no choice at this point, at least with regard to this 14th Amendment theory. Um, I think that what the Colorado Supreme Court has done and now what maybe the main courts are poised to do leaves the United States Supreme Court with no choice but to get involved. That said, I think what all of this litigation really shows is that you do have, I think, a, a tendency for a lot of people now to try to achieve through the court system what they have not been able to achieve at the polls. That's right. And that's one of the real concerns about all of this disqualification legislation is you just can't have a system in which you have 50 separate states, you know, secretaries of state, often partisan actors, elected officials making their own decisions as to whether particular people can be on the ballot or not. That's not a workable system. It's not the one that that the founders designed, right. and I don't think it's one that the United States Supreme Court is going to endorse. It's going to be a very messy year. There's no getting around it. Gentlemen, thank you so much for being here. Will and Tom, have a wonderful New Year.